Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Ross. Today's part eight of my employee training series where we're tracking employee training and certifications and all that jazz. So if you haven't watched parts one through seven, go watch those first then come on back. All right, last time we set it so that if our person changed this to completed, it would set the completed date. And if there was, an expiration date or an expiration number of years it would set that i don't think hr 101 has it let's double check and make sure hr 101 yep it's a zero all right hr oh there it is it's a zero hr 202 is a one so if this was hr 202 let's just change this here we'll change this to completed boom we get a expiration date and expiration date now what if the person goes back and changes this to in progress. Well, that means that they didn't complete it or, you know, expire it. So we want to maybe go back and change these to null, right? So let's go back to our design view and we'll go into the code editor. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, we'll, we'll, we'll bump this down. We'll say if status combo equals one or status combo equals three, that is, let me look at my little notepad here. That is in progress or failed, right? Then that's in progress or failed. We're just gonna say completed date equals null expired. Expiration date, expiration date equals null, right? Then this becomes an else if that, right? Pretty straightforward, save it. Now, what if they set it equal to expired? Well, if that's the case, right? If they come in here and they set this equal to expired, then leave the completion date alone, but set the expiration date equal to, I'd say today, unless the date's in the past, All right? And later on, we're gonna do something where we can say, okay, go through the database. Maybe we'll make an update query or something to go through the database and mark all of the stuff that should be expired as expired. But if they do it manually, right? If I make market expired right now, and this is like next next February, well, set it to expired. If not, if this is in the past, leave it at whatever date it's at. So here's how, here's what I would say. I would say another else if in here, status combo equals four then, and this is they market expired manually. I'd say if expiration date is greater than today's date, then set the expiration date equal to today's date, right? If it's in the future, market expired now. If it's in the past, leave it. All right, makes sense, right? Okay. And of course, let's double check it. Let's say uh, this is, okay, let's go back to in progress. Oh, let's, let's put a date in here, 2025-11. And ooh, we gotta change that cycle too. Look, it went to a new record. We'll get to that in a second, All right? Let's mark it expired, boom, and it puts today's date in there. But if it's a past date, if this is 1101, and we'll go from in progress. Oh, see, our in progress kills it, right? <laughs> Let's put today's date in there. We'll go 01. Let's make it November 1st. And we'll now change it to expired. And it leaves it as November 1st. That's what I wanted. Let's set that cycle. See, there's all kinds of little things when you're building a database that you're going to constantly be making little tweaks and stuff like, like that here, like this. I want this to be uh, the cycle being just the current record. And from this form, you could even do things like turning off the um, the record selectors, the navigation buttons. That's up to you. If you want them to be able to add stuff and move between records in here, that's okay. But the way we have it opening is it opens up just that particular field or that particular record. All right? You could turn these off if you want to. You could turn this off. It's up to you. These are all beginner things that you should know how to do, so I'm not going to waste time covering them in this video. If you want to learn more about that kind of stuff, form formatting and that, go watch my beginner series, okay? All right, now what if they come in here, all right? And um, let's say, actually, let's go back to Jean-Luc because I know he's got stuff on his, all right. So he's got these. Now, let's say that he completed this, but he completed it last month and you're just now entering it, okay? You marked it completed today and it put today's date in there and it calculated the six months but he actually completed this October 1st. 
and you're just now entering it. So we need to also update the expiration date if the completed date is manually changed, right? Now here's the problem. I already got all this nice code here for updating the expiration date. I don't wanna have to put this in two different places. So this is why it's important to make functions and subroutine, oops, someone's beaming in. It's important to make stuff like this into its own standalone subroutine so you can call it from two different places or more and not have to repeat code. We don't want repeated code in our database, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna snip out all the stuff that can be modularized, right? So we're gonna say, let's create a private subroutine, update expir expiration date, like this. We're gonna put all the stuff up in there that has to deal with updating the expiration date. So these variables that we need, we don't need them here, but we do need them up there. Okay, so get rid of those extra lines. And now all of this stuff right here is the stuff that has to do with updating the expiration date, right? So I'm gonna cut that out and I'm gonna put it up here. All right, let me fix my tab like that. Okay, and denting is important, people. Very important. You don't know how many times I've helped someone with their code and it all was because, you know, a mistake could be something as easy as this and they didn't know that, you know, this end if matched up with that. It's just little things. Make sure your indenting is crisp and clean, no caffeine, right? Okay, but we still got to call this code from down here. So I'm going to take this, right, update expiration date and put it right there. So now status combo equals two, update the completed date, then run all that same code. Okay, it hops up here, does all that, and jumps back down there. That's how that works. But more importantly, now I can call this from other places. For example, I might want to call it when the completed date is manually updated. So I'm going to go over to event, after update, dot, dot, dot. That puts me in here, and I'm going to go, boop. That's all you got to do. Now it'll call that same block of code to update the expiration date. Save it. Debug compile once in a while. Come back over here, close it. All right, let's go into AC 101. Let's say it's in progress, okay. All right, now he finishes it today, so he completed it. But, oh, he, he turned in the paperwork today. He really completed it October 1st. So I'm gonna come in here and change this to 10, 10 1, and it update. Oop, did it update? Hang on, it didn't update. 10 1, uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, I know what, I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. I ran, I ran through this earlier. I forgot I, I let this bug in here intentionally. All right, I'm gonna come back over here. I want you to see if you can figure out what the problem is. Pause the video and see if you can troubleshoot this problem. All right, do you see it? We're looking up the expiration years, converting it to months. Expiration date equals date add, expiration months to today's date. That's the problem. We don't wanna use today's date there. We want to use the expiration or uh, the uh, completed date. Completed date. Same. The expiration date is based on a number of months since the completed date, not today's date. All right. Okay. That ought to fix it. Let's go back over here. I know there's a reason I left it in there for, for something. So let's change this to ten two. And there you go, four two. And it works. Beautiful. All right. So that's about it for today's video. Um, Coming up Monday in part nine, we're gonna start making some queries to show things like employees with missing training, right? Based on their roles, if they have not even you know, enrolled or set up the training that they need, if it's missing. Uh, unfinished training, in other words, it's got an enrollment date and uh, no completed date. Um, expired training or expiring soon. These are all things we wanna see. I'm gonna show you how to make queries for them. And then maybe we'll make a report out of one of them, but making the report's easy. Once you get the data in a query, that building a report out of it is, just, is beginner stuff. And then also we need a uh, some automated method for marking training that is expired as expired. So if it, you know, when the database opens, for example, if we see the expiration date is in the past, change the status to expired, all those kinds of things. So that's lots, lots more coming up. Those are just some more ideas and things I have. If you want to see stuff, right? If I haven't covered something, you wanna see how to do it, post your comments down below, and if I like it, I'll add it to the list. All right, this, this series will continue on as long as we've got cool stuff to add to it, within reason, of course. 
Um, or if it's if it's little things that I don't think a lot of people will like, maybe we'll throw it into a you know another extended cut or a seminar or something. But if you got ideas for stuff that I haven't covered that you want to see how to do, post them down below in the notes and the comments. But that's going to do it for today. That's your tech help video. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you Monday for part nine. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. First, we have Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Juan is a 13-time Microsoft Access MVP. You can check them out at accessexperts.com. Another shout out to Sammy Shama from Shama Consultancy. Sammy is a certified Microsoft Office specialist, and he not only offers Access application development, but he also provides one-on-one -on -one tutoring services. So if you need someone to hold your hand and help you with your access project, Sammy is your guy. Check him out at shamaconsultancy.com. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. 
Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.